Goedemorgen, mooi gezien de mensen van Coastland Revival Centrum. Good morning, beautiful, blessed people of Coastland Revival Center. If you're watching this with someone, turn to them quickly. Tell them I am talking to you, you beautiful, blessed you. Hallelujah. Well, it is Sunday morning and what a privilege it is to be alive and around the word this morning. Thank you for Corey and Liesel and, and uh, Leo again for leading us in worship this morning. And you know, on Friday, um, I truly had a wonderful encounter with the Holy Spirit while I was ministering to someone else. And I knew just was thankful for the Holy Spirit and I was reminded that the Holy Spirit is what connects us the Holy Spirit is what moves all around we might be here and you might be there but you know we are connected by the Holy Spirit and I pray this morning that as we finish off this service today with bringing the word that the Holy Spirit will start to move that he will move into your living room that he will move into your bedroom wherever you're watching this and that you will have an encounter with the Holy Spirit because the truth is is that one touch of the Holy Spirit can change your whole life it changed mine it's continuously changing mine so now I'm not a man without faults, but the Holy Spirit is busy with me. And I'm so thankful for the Holy Spirit. I'm so grateful for the Holy Spirit that this morning I'm here. You're there, but he can make this word alive in your heart this morning. He can bring this forth anew because we're in interesting times. But interesting times call for interesting measures. And, you know, um, I've been battling with this thought about. How should I connect? How must I approach this whole thing with this COVID-19? And What's the way forward for us? And the Holy Spirit said, things may change, but I won't. So just rely on me because I am the same. Hallelujah. And I'm so thankful this morning for the Holy Spirit and that He is working in and among and upon us. Like never before. Father, I thank you for your word this morning. And I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are not bound this morning, but that you move. And I pray that as you move this morning, you will come upon every person listening to this. That as they engage with us in this morning, that you will engage with them in this morning. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for not being contained, but being free, moving upon, moving among us everywhere we go. And I thank you that you are alive and that you are active and that you are moving. And thank you that you are with us every day, all the time, never leaving nor forsaking us, empowering us, the power of God in and upon, upon and among us. And that ons kan weet dat ons kan groei in die vrug and that your fruits will be visible for everybody to see. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I will open this word this morning to us as we open up our hearts and open up our minds for you to move. Move among us. It's my prayer in Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. I said to my wife that this whole thing sitting down is becoming difficult for me. So this morning we're doing this standing up. Hallelujah. We're standing up. We are engaging in the word of God. Standing up. I am preaching this morning. I'm not sitting all calm and relaxed and having a cup of coffee this morning. I feel that God has got a message for us. And I believe that I cannot sit still and speak this morning. Right. So if you've got your Bible, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for his word. Open it to the book of James. Jacobus. Jacobus in James chapter 1. We're going to be reading from verse 2 and we're going to go up until verse 4. All right. So before we get there, as you're preparing that, you know, I was realizing this week, uh, you know, in this week, we're doing a lot of outreach at the moment, um, taking food to people, delivering food, 
We've now also engaged with other NPOs in town and we're really trying to assist as much families as possible. And I tell you that the, that the need is dire. Um, I get geskrik hierdie week. Um, that people uh, are desperately hungry. And we are trying to get to as much as we can and as many as we can. And by the grace of God, we, 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 we are achieving much. But in our processes, we went um, and uh, ministered and reached out to people with some food this week. Um, we met and came upon the government's testing agency, facility, people. Raila and Alabaki, and they're taking testing samples and uh, doing tests on people. And I realized how much testing is going on. I mean, we're getting testing, we're getting tested for the virus. Um, listen, I would like it to be as positive as you can, but please stay COVID-19 negative. All right, so remain negative in COVID-19, but in all other ways, please remain positive. But there's a lot of testing going on. And if you have a look around us, we also see that there's a lot of testing times. And these are things that I've really come to see this week, especially. I could verschrikkelijk baie nooit gesien. And I realize it's testing times. These are testing times for families. These are testing times for our government. These are testing times for churches. These are testing times for individuals. We're getting tested. And these are testing times upon our resolve. These are testing times upon the way that we used to go around, used to do things. It's testing the way we've done things. We are being tested at home. Discovering things maybe in our partners that we missed a couple of over the past few years because we've been so busy. We're feeling tested in ourselves, becoming frustrated, becoming tired, beginning to ask ourselves some important questions. So there's a lot of testing going on and another area that's being tested is our faith. So, I want to talk to us this morning about faith tests. Geloof toetsen. Let's turn to James chapter 1 verse 2. It says, My brethren, he's talking to his people. Hallelujah. It's almost like me speaking to you. Paul wrote this letter. He wasn't with them. But he wrote them this letter as if he was there. You know, I'm reading this. As if I'm with you, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete Lacking nothing. Wow. This scripture speaks for itself. This is one of those scriptures where after you read it and you meditate on it a little bit, you realize that there ain't much we have to say about it than what it's just said. It is skrif praat for himself. Our faith is being tested. But when it's tested, it produces patience. It produces something. When faith is being tested, it produces something. And in this portion of scripture, we see it produces patience. Another word that's used for the Greek word for patience in this portion of scripture is steadfastness. I mean, isn't it awesome to know that all that these trials are doing is that they are testing our faith so that it produces patience, even more steadfastness. Because this COVID-19 is only going to 
establish our God even more powerful and even more greater because that is who He is. But our faith still remains tested. Our faith is still being in a being placed in a testing position. Listen to what 1 Peter 1 says. 1 Peter 1 verse 6. In this you greatly rejoice that now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials, that the genuineness of your faith, being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. When our faith gets tested, it brings forth a revelation of Jesus Christ. Because He's the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Faith is alive. And when it's tested, it produces strength and a steadfastness within us and within you and within me. It doesn't bring forth a weakness. Faith is active. It moves. Faith is what keeps us rooted in God. Faith produces and works something within us. You know, it's easy to say that we have faith. But you see, faith is alive, as I've said, because faith grows. Geloof groei. Jesus talks about faith and he calls it in the size of a mustard seed. And then in a different parable he says that the mustard tree is the biggest of all of them. And it then becomes a place of habitation for birds and nests and all kinds of animals that like to come to this tree as our faith grows. But faith cannot grow unless it's tested. Faith cannot expand unless it's tested because faith only becomes a reality really a reality when it's been tested geloof word net 'n werklikheid wanneer dit werklik getoets word if everything is going great and everything is going fine then i easily put my faith in my own ability and i easily put my faith in my belongings in what I have in the securities of this life. But when faith gets tested, it usually actually produces, as the Bible says, gold. It brings forth gold. Why? Because who am I believing in? And wie is my geloof? As ek dier geloof toets gaan, and wie is my geloof? You see, God is all we need. We sing that song, You are all that I need. Jesus is all that I need. We sing it. We sing it. And you see, the moment those things get tested, you know, a lot of things have been taken out of our hands. The way the economy is going, it's been taken out of our hands. When this whole thing's going to end, it's been taken out of our hands. A lot of things have been removed from our control. And suddenly, the only thing we have left is to believe. We've got to believe in something. We've got to believe in someone. Our faith is being tested because what happens now is now we only really need to start to believe in whom we say we believe in. Does that even make sense? You see, it's the moment that our faith been, is being tested is when we really have to believe in whom we say we believe in. Because God does not change. God has proven Himself able. God has proven Himself capable. God has proven Himself faithful. How can that be tested? It's not God that's in, 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 in the exam room. God wordt nie in examen lokal ingesitte. It's not Him being tested. It's our faith in what we truly believe in Him in. That's being tested. It's our faith in His Word that is being tested. How much of His Word is alive within us? 
in us. Hoeveel van sy woord is nog steeds bezig om te bouwen en how much of it is still being activated within us? That is what's being tested. Because our God has not changed. He remains the same. He's just as faithful as He was now. He's just as faithful now as He was. When things were going good, when things were going fine, He's the same faithful God. And His word really still means the same. If He says that He rejoices in the prosperity of His people, if He says that when it's going good, He still means it when it's not feeling as if it's going as good. You see, that's the greatness and the awesomeness. That is faith being tested. But faith being tested produces a steadfastness. Not in God, in us. Because it just reveals Jesus to be more faithful. And it reveals Jesus to be more powerful in everything that He is. And everything that He says that He is. Listen, I want to tell you today. Maybe it's not going to be easy. We're facing a couple of serious challenges. But let me tell you right now. That our God is only going to ex ex take us further. He's only going to propel us. He is going to be establishing Himself in our midst. Because... If all the options have been removed from the table and the only one that's still there that feels as if my faith is being tested and that's God. He's the only option that I have left. Let me tell you, then we are in a position that God really likes to be. Why? Because He's a good Father. I know, you know, when, 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 when we were younger and I know when your children were maybe a little bit younger... And um, your kids, uh, or even if you then went to your dad, you know, your faith, you had a lot of faith in your own ability. I remember like driving bicycle. And as I was driving bicycle, learning how to drive bicycle, I was very insecure until I got it. And then the more I got it, the more self-assured I became, the more confident I became. And at one stage, you know, it's like, Going in and going flat out and hands off and all free air there driving my bicycle. No hands. Kijk maar geen hande, kijk maar geen tande kind of thing, you know. But the moment that I would turn to my dad when I came into a snag. Hey dad, I fell. I got hurt. I now need you to help me. Take me this a step further. I know when me as a dad, when my kids come to me and say, help me, take me, help me to take this a step further, help my own. Hear it in a tree further to find? Then immediately, when all their options have been removed, I can step forward and prove something to them. Prove my faithfulness and my love and my loyalty to them. We are living in testing times. But we're serving a tested God. He has been proven in every way, in every manner. There is nothing that we are facing that He cannot and has not overcome. There is nothing that is going to come our way that He has not given us the power through His Holy Spirit to overcome. So it, even if our faith is being tested, we step up to the plate. And even if in the midst of it, me feeling that my faith is being tested, I step up to the, faith, to, to the plate and say that I still believe that the God who is, the God who was, and the God who will forever be, is my God. And He is for me, and He is for you. I step up in faith and I say, Lord, I'm still going to believe that you're going to give me a way through this. And I'm going to get through this stronger. I'm going to get through this more gloriously. Lord, what you've been preparing for us is far greater. But the, um, in Romans 8, Paul says that I regard the troubles of this earth nothing in comparison to what God has got prepared for us. And I truly believe that something great is coming. Something awesome is coming. And I believe it. In testing times when my faith is being tested and I'm wondering, where will this come from? 
Where will that come from? Lord, you better show up in this area because I'm not sure how I'm going to do this on my own. Lord, you've got to help me. I need you. When the options and the only option is Jesus, we've got still a wonderful, glorious, magnificent option available. If he is our only option, we've got the best option that's available to us. And let me tell you, it's going to become a time. We're moving into a time. Ons bewegende tijden, waar as die heilige geest ons enigste optie is, where the Holy Spirit is our only option, then it's the great time for Him to pour it out on all flesh. Because then all flesh turn and look to only Him. And if we turn and look to only Him, He becomes active, powerful and glorious upon us. You know, when my faith is being tested, what I do is I step up and I keep on doing what I'm keeping on doing. Look, when I, I, I'm speaking for myself, I'm speaking for myself. And hopefully there's something that you can learn from it. When my faith is being tested in finance and I tithe and I keep on doing what God expects me to do with my finances. When, when, when my faith is being tested in my health, then I declare the word of God and I start making some good and healthy decisions regarding my life. When my faith is being tested from all the kind of voices and all the voices and all the of it is, then I turn to the one voice that I know has been true in my life and I start confessing it. I start proclaiming it. I take the word of God and I proclaim the word of God. Word of God that says, I will not go under, I will go up. I am blessed when I walk in and I am blessed when I walk out. Greater is he that is within me than he that is in this world. If God be for me, who can be against me? This is the things that I practice when I feel that my faith is being tested. And soon I start to see the gold that's being produced within me. Because then Jesus stands up. He is the word of God. And if I proclaim the word of God, as I word van die um, verklaar, then he starts standing up and responding to his word. Because he is active and and, and, and ready to perform his word. He is gereed, he is actief, and he will say word in our lives bevestig. So when I feel that my faith is being tested, then I stand upon the things that I know he has been faithful in. He has been faithful in my life in so many ways. And he has been faithful in your life in so many ways. And then we start to see that when we see the things that he's been faithful in, he will remain faithful. He will be the God who is faithful to the very end. His name is faithful. Hallelujah. And let the Holy Spirit come in and upon us that we will know that God before us is not against us. But let me tell you what he is against. He's against this virus. He's against the things and the bad things and the negative things that is coming against his people. He's against his people ending up in poverty and having nothing. He's against his people going to ruin because he's for us and he's not against us. He wants to build us up. Every good and perfect gift comes from the hand of Father, from the Father of lights, the Bible says. And I believe that. I believe that in my life. I believe that in your life. You'll find that piece of scripture just a little bit further in that James chapter 1 that you've read. And I believe it. And I take it for myself and I take it for, for and I want to encourage you to take it for yourself. We're living in testing times. Our resolve is being tested. But our outcome is sure when we are in Jesus Christ. Gold is being produced, people. Something new is being produced. You know, that's the one thing that is always a good thing when God tests us. He takes out the old and gets in the new. Why? Because sometimes it's a good thing to take to, to, to part with the old. There's a good thing for the old thing to say, Goodbye, Tata, we've seen to where you've brought us, but now I need to step into new so that I can see to where God wants to take me and He wants to take us into greater things, into more glorious things. And I am thankful. That's why the Bible says, Count it joy. Isn't it amazing that the two times that we've read now that he talks about faith being tested. In James he says, count it all joy. And in Peter he says, rejoice. Rejoice when our faith is being tested. Isn't that a strange concept? Rejoice. No, it's not a strange concept. Because the one we believe in is so powerful and glorious, it's going to produce a rejoicing. There's going to be a joy that's going to be produced. When we are being tested, when our faith is being tested, there is a 
wees wat naar voren gaan kom in hierdie toets, in hierdie tye van wat, wat ons ervaar is, een geloofstoets it's gonna come hallelujah and that should get us excited our faith is being tested but you know what the only thing is, the only thing that's going to result from this, it's going to it's going to produce and show us how great and how glorious and how marvelous and how faithful and how powerful and how magnificent our God really is. When Moses' faith was tested before a closed Red Sea, God showed up. When, 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 when David's faith was tested before a very big man whom everybody feared, God showed up. When whom else can we use? When Elijah's faith was tested. And he said, let the God of fire answer. God showed up. Whenever God's people were in a moment of their faith being tested to the limit, God showed up. When Jehoshaphat was standing before three nations as a small nation, he started singing, praising God. And God showed up. You see, that produces joy within us. That is what creates the gold that God has placed within me, within you. And let me tell you, I can see gold coming forth. I can see those people who are experiencing faith, tests, geloof, toetsen, goud is bezig om uit te kom. Gold is busy coming out. Gold is being pouring out. And I am excited to see the gold, the best that is within you, that is going to be coming out of you. In testing times, the best comes forth. Let me tell you, if we trust in God, He is going to pull out the best. He's going to take the best and bring it out of you so that you can thrive, that you can shine, that the Jesus can come to the forefront like never before. Hallelujah. Promotion is coming. Spiritual promotion comes when we pass our faith tests. And we're going to higher levels. We're going to exceedingly more powerful levels. Because a steadfastness, a standvastigheid, wordt in ons ingewerk. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that amazing? Let me tell you, they can do their tests and they can look for positive and they can look for negative. But every faith test that's being done will produce only the positive, the word of God within us. And that makes me full of joy because I know my God is in control and He's in control of you and He's in control of me. Hallelujah. And I just want to take this leap of faith right now. And I want to say, if you are unsure if you feel that financially there might be a few challenges then i want to say to you take that leap of faith and take god on his word that he will be for you because i realize that finances are probably the greatest concern the secret greatest phrase for the means and i just want to come and i want to say god is your source and your provider you know that word is going to be tested and is being tested like never before in the people's lives. When we say that God is my provider. And suddenly. Only half a salary. Some people no salary. Who? God is my provider. Faith is being tested. I want to encourage you. He will. He will prove himself faithful. And I want to take this leap of faith with you. And I want to declare. That even in this time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. And I want to declare it and pray it over you. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I declare it over every person who is experiencing financial strength. In Jesus' name, that you will provide for them supernaturally. I believe you are the God of the supernatural. And I thank you for that, Jesus. And we release our faith in it. In Jesus' mighty name. And if you are experiencing sickness, if you feel that you may be experiencing some kind of symptoms, maybe not of this whole COVID thing, 
but maybe anything else, I still believe that God is the healer. And we spoke about it earlier. The Holy Spirit can be here. The Holy Spirit can be there. And I believe that He's there and He can touch you right now. Father, thank you that we can stand upon your word. word. And I'm taking this step of faith, this leap of faith, Lord, for your supernatural divine healing to touch the bodies of those who are sick. To touch the bodies of those who are experiencing some kind of symptom. Lord, I come against diabetes. I come against dementia. Lord, I come against any form of sickness. Lord, I come against dermatological problems. Foul problem. I come against them, Lord Jesus. Lord, I come against um, eye problems. I come against ear problems, infections. In the mighty name of Jesus. And I declare healing in the name of Jesus. And I say, Father, thank you that you still heal. That you are the healer in the mighty name of Jesus. And I'm releasing my faith today, Lord. And I'm saying, if my faith be tested, then let my faith not be found wanting, Lord. Let my faith be found increased in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. If there's anybody who is experiencing depression, then I declare and I take it in faith right now that that depression will go now in Jesus' name. So, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, that depression goes now in Jesus' name. And I thank you, Lord, for the joy of the Lord to come upon those. And let the garments of praise fall upon your people in the mighty name of Jesus. Give us joy, Lord, joy unspeakable. I pray for those who are concerned for peace, supernatural peace to come upon them. I pray for joy, the joy of the Lord, which is our strength kind of joy. I pray, Lord, that we will have a steadfastness. And Lord, that we will move forward and as everything in this life is being tested, we will not be found wanting, but we will be found standing tall for Jesus, that the gold will be brought forth. And I thank you, Lord, that you are with us, ready to perform and establish your word in our lives. Thank you in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you for this day. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for this time that we had sitting around your word. And I pray, Holy Spirit, that you will move upon your people like never before. Rakala an yara. Lord, let us not become all, 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 all low, varam, all lukewarm while we are apart. Lord, but let us warm up for your kingdom and for your glory. Because there is a battle to be fought and we need to stand up. We need to get up in the midst of it and fight and stand strong in the Lord because the Lord our God is with us. In we thank you, Lord. I pray for our people, Lord. Bless them. Keep them safe. Hold them safe. Wrap them in your arms of love. Let us experience you in new and fantastic and glorious ways. Thank you, Jesus, that you are for us and not against us. And we worship you. Receive thy praise and thy honor and thy glory. And that all is bewerd aan u, Heere. In the mighty, glorious, precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen and Amen.